Let's bring in New Yorker staff writer Jane Mayer, who, along with Ronan Farrow, has been breaking lots of news about the sexual misconduct allegations about, against Kavanaugh, whose latest piece is on the confusion surrounding the FBI's renewed investigation. And characterize that confusion for us, Jane. Well, a number of people, particularly Yale classmates, but others too, who have information that they think is important and they want the FBI to see, feel that they can't get it to the FBI. Um, they've, they've, they have tried. They've been, they've called. They've been told to try calling an FBI tip line. Go to various field offices of the FBI where nobody seems to know what they're talking about. It's been um, a confusing situation. And some of the people that I've talked to, who I I regard as people who've got key information have are feeling that um, beginning to wonder if this is a real investigation or some kind of whitewash in the words of one of them. Um, Deborah Ramirez was on that list even the the very restricted list of that reporting suggests was initially handed the FBI by the White House of people to interview. Do we know if she is interviewed with the FBI as of yet? I believe she has been interviewed by the FBI, but one of the people that I wrote about in this story is a classmate of theirs, that is of Debbie Ramirez and of Brett Kavanaugh in the Yale class of 1987, who remembers hearing about Ramirez's allegations. He remembers hearing about the party that she was at and the scene that she described. Um, he says he's 100 percent sure that it was Brett Kavanaugh who remembers hearing it 35 years ago, either the night of the party or in the next day or two. And he's written up a statement for the FBI, and he's gotten no response. I checked with him right before going on the air. He still got no response. Um, the same is true of the lawyer for Elizabeth Razor, who um, was the college girlfriend of Mark Judge, who is the uh, friend of Kavanaugh from high school, who, uh, according to the allegation against Kavanaugh having to do with Christine Blasey Ford, Mark Judge was the only other person in the room at the time. Um, and this is a woman uh, who went out with Mark Judge, who said that the descriptions he's given of their innocence at that period are a lie. And she knows because Mark Judge confessed to her with a lot of shame, she says, and she's sorry to have to say this, that when he was in high school, he had sex with an inebriated woman and several other boys from high school had sex with the same woman. And he wants, she wants, Elizabeth Razor wants the FBI to understand that this is the social background right. against which this, these allegations from Christine Blasey Ford took place. And we should say Elizabeth Razor was on the record saying that in, in, in a story you reported. She is trying to get that the FBI as well. There's a number of people we've seen reports of in that, in that case. Um, one thing I mean, I think one other thing, Chris, we yeah. should say is that, that Mark Judge has denied it. And of course, Kavanaugh has denied this as well. I mean, you know, we got to yes. give everybody their side. But these are people who, when I interviewed them, what they are saying is, I want to talk to the FBI. I, it's about trying to get a fair process. They want to do this under oath at threat of perjury. And, and they're saying they still haven't been able to talk to the FBI. And, and I think that's the issue. It's that it, it, they, they actually want to give information. They feel a civic duty about it. Mark, Mark Judge, we should say, his lawyer said that he has an uh, interview with the FBI for this sort of renewed and reopened background check, though that interview is not complete. It strikes me that one of the issues here may be, and this is an attempt at a, a sort of charitable reading, but I'd like to hear what you think, which is that this is a highly unusual background inv investigation because it's extremely public. Usually the FBI is doing this in the background. They're going out and talking to people. Um, there's a lot of people, presumably, that are trying to get to the FBI at this point. It seems, at least witnessing what I've heard from you and other reporters, the FBI is having a hard time putting them in contact with the investigators. Uh, it, it, you know, there, there's, it, it's a small social group that it's not that big mm -hmm. a group of people as far as I know. I mean, it took Ronan Farrow and myself um, maybe two weeks to sort of tap into this right. social group at Yale. And, and if we could do, we, we're not the FBI, so I, I, would, I would think the FBI would be able to get to this group of people, and it's important, I think. I mean, the lesson we learned from the Anita Hill story whenever that was 27 years ago was that corroborating witnesses are important because you get to this situation where you've got this standoff between two 
credible seeming people maybe and 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 it's very hard to know the truth and so you need to talk to others who were involved at the time and who know these characters all right uh, jay mayor who's been doing great reporting on this we will continue to monitor this with you if that's cool with you uh, throughout the week as uh, that deadline uh, ticks forward thanks a lot thanks hey there i'm chris hayes from msnbc thanks for watching msnbc on youtube if you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos